Welcome back to some more exciting work with exponential and logarithmic functions. I'm your host, Mr. Todd Loki. In our second video, we're going to be doing uh, working with e, the natural number e. Uh, but I put aka properties of exponents because really this is going to be a review once we learn about the very special number e. So let's get started. E is a very special number that is about 2.72 when you round to the second decimal place. Uh, it's significant because it occurs uh, a lot or frequently in nature when things are growing without bounds or continuously. They grow at that rate. Uh, it applies to loans or, or investments that are compounding continuously. Lots of applications of E. So we're just going to get a little extra practice with properties of exponents by working with E. I want you to treat this just like um, it's a, uh, a variable. Because any number works this way, we're always going to keep it there. E is irrational, like pi. Uh, it's the Euler number. Lots of cool things from our reading. So reread section uh, 8, 4, or 8, 3, sorry, if you want to learn more. So properties of exponents apply. So we're doing a product of powers. Okay, so the powers are of the same base E. So we know that the base is going to stay the same. And when we multiply, if you look back, if you need help with this, this is a good review that we are going to add the exponents. Okay, Powers of powers is multiplication, but when it's a product of two powers, then we add. So our end answer is e to the mm, sixth. Okay, And that's our answer, e to the sixth. In the second example, we get a power acting on a product and powers of powers. But I just want to do this example to remind you that this two squares both terms. Okay, but it's also negative. So that's I added that twist in there. So let's go ahead and deal with the negative first. I like to do that. That negative means that we're going to have uh, a fraction. Okay, and uh, that means that everything's going to the bottom. So I'm just going to put one over. I'm going to put the parentheses here. Four e cubed and then we're going to square it. But that 2 is going to still get pushed in. Because the negative is acting on the whole thing, we can do this. So let's go ahead and see what this is equal to again. All right? And what we'll see here, it's still a 1 on top. Now let's square every, every term. 4 squared, 16. e cubed is going to be e cubed times 2. So what we're going to end up with then is the following. We're going to have 1 over 16 e to the 6th. Okay, And that, my friends, is our final answer. Let's do a couple more where we take a look at more complicated work and review of exponents. Okay, In this first example, slide this guy out of the way. Uh, what we're really looking at here is taking the cube root of a variety of terms. And we can break this down into its pieces so that we can see how it works. So we're going to take the cube root of 8. We notice that that's a perfect cube, and that's good. And we're going to multiply that by the cube root of e to the 12x. Okay. Now you might be asking yourself, is 12 at e to the 12x a perfect cube? Well, it is, but we'll show you that in just a second here. First, cube root 8, let's just bring it down, it's 2. And we're going to be multiplying that by, by this. So let's go ahead and put this in exponential form. Let's switch over to the side and see that this is true, and then I'll show you the shortcut. Okay. So over here on the side, it's degree. Uh, if we do this in exponential form, it's e to the 12x, and then I'm going to raise that to the 1 -third. So basically, I can divide this term by 3, or multiply by 1 third. So this becomes e to the 12x over 3. Okay? Which is equal to e to the 4x. Okay? So it looks like when we're in this original section here, that both the 12 and the x need to be multiples of 3. Not true. 12x is a multiple of 3. It's 3 times 4x. So we can still take this 12x, divide by 3, 
that gets us out of prison because it's perfect cubed. Okay, now we're done. Let's just write our answer all cleaned up here. 2e to the 4x. Jolly good. Okay. This last example here is going to ask us to look a little bit at what it means to really multiply exponents. So I have 2e to the x times e to the x plus 3. So this means that we can add our exponents. So let's let's go ahead and do that. The 2 is going to stay there. And we're going to have e add your exponents x plus x plus 3. I just add both of them in there. You'll see both terms. There's the x plus 3 right there. So what is this equal to? In this exponent, don't be afraid to just combine like terms. x plus x is 2x. And since we can't add or combine 3 with the 2x, we just add them together. Make it simple. Adding 2x and 3 is 2x plus 3. Sometimes algebra makes it simpler for us because we add without really combining any terms. This is adding without combining terms. And that's our final answer. This just shows me that you understand that whatever you add as far as exponents that you just add. We're going to do one final thing together in this graph and we're going to graph these functions. So I've given you the following graph. y equals 2e to the negative 2x. And the first question I have for you is growth or decay? Hmm. Let's remind ourselves that e is 2.72 or approximately. Okay. The 2 that leads out here is our initial value. Okay. That's our initial value. So we want to keep that in mind. Okay. That's that guy right there. All right. And so our growth or decay factor is the number that is in here, okay, right there. But notice that there's a negative exponent right here. So E, yes, is 2.72 and you want to say growth, but watch this. Let's set this as Y equals 2, our initial value stays the same, but then that negative is going to make this 1 over e to the x. And 1 divided by 2.72, well, that's a fraction, that's less than 1. This is decay. So the key here is that even if you have a whole number, or not a whole number, a number greater than 1, or an irrational number like e, if you raise it to a negative power, we've got a decay function. What's that going to look like? that. Okay, so let's graph this thing. It's going to look like this line actually in the background here, smoother than I can draw. How do we do this? Simple xy table. We're always going to start with zero. I hope that's coming to be um, pretty obvious now because this term here is going to become a one, so we're, it's just our initial value, and let's go up by one. Uh, well, because this is decay, let's let's simplify our lives and do a negative. Decay models, I like to go to negative 1 because let's look at what this is going to have to do. This is going to give me 2 times 1 over e to the negative 1. Well, guess what? That's just e, so we can approximate this as 5.44. Okay? Because the negative causes that to flip back the other way. Let's see what this looks like on the graph. We've got 0, 2 negative 1, 5.4, right there, okay, and a decay model looks like this, no shifting horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, okay, let's slide that in over here, there it is, y equals 0, let's watch it approach that horizontal asymptote. Garrett, that line's for you. All right. So, as with our previous two sets of examples, these the work with the natural number e is going to be the same as work we've done before. We've got our properties of exponents in these four examples. And in graphing, the only thing we need to look at is growth and decay models are going to be indicated by a positive or negative exponent value.